You listen up, Marines. You take a good long look. Oh, none of you ever see a day like this again. Now, nobody will ever know what it was like. But maybe the ones who lived it. You just be damn sure you don't forget the ones who didn't. December 7th, 1941, 10 in the morning. The United States suffers one of history's most devastating surprise attacks. With 2,403 dead and her once invincible Navy decimated, America is forced to join the conflict already raging in Europe and Asia. Prior to Pearl Harbor, the Japanese war machine had swept across China, cutting off American aid and then pressed on into Burma with limited resistance. At home, Japan was building up a seemingly superior naval fleet, led by some of the world's largest aircraft carriers. But Admiral Yamamoto's prediction had come true. The aftermath of the Day of Infamy had indeed awakened the sleeping giant that was America. As the Emperor's armies march toward the Philippines, the United States takes action. Dear Joe, you'll never know how happy and relieved we were to hear from you. Mom and I were clearing the lunch dishes when news of the Pearl Harbor attack came on the radio. Mom went all white and dropped a big platter on the floor. Dad finally calmed her down, but I don't think she slept at all, waiting for word that you were all right. There were more photographs in the paper this morning. It must have been horrible to be there, Joe. Thank heaven Donnie wasn't stationed in Hawaii, too. I don't think Mom would have survived the worry. Like everyone else, we listened to the president's speech the next day. Dad was real quiet afterwards. I think he always believed there'd never be another great war like the one he'd lived through. That evening, I saw an amazing sight. I passed by the army recruitment office and there were hundreds of men lined up outside. A few boys from my school were there and eight men on Dad's shift clocked out and signed right up, the coal dust still on their faces. We hear now that war's been declared and once you've shipped out, you won't be able to tell us where you are. Write back when you can, and stay safe. Love from your sister, Mary. P.S. Mom wants to keep all the Christmas decorations up until you and Donnie get home, so get this war over with fast.
Three is on the ground. We have to be using coal mines, and there's no way we can make it through these streets without a dismounted man. Now, this tank is on its last legs. If you stay close, keep us clear on the flanks and to the rear. Their attacks are chewing us up. Now they've got a squatter and an observation post somewhere. Probably up high in one of those buildings. They'll have a radio relay station nearby. Find a boat and knock them out. We'll hold here. Got a lot riding on you, Marine. Don't let us down.
Sorry about your brother. We, uh, we got a damn tough job done, and most of us made it out alive. He was, well, he was a good Marine. You can't ask for more than that. With American armed forces now fully engaged in war, Japanese occupied South Pacific Islands. Are feeling the pressure. But hopes are crushed for a swift Allied victory in the Philippines. After a long, bloody battle, General MacArthur is ordered to retreat. Thousands of troops are left behind and forced to surrender. The enemy now controls the Philippines. MacArthur vows to return. Dear Joe, I have no idea if you've been told yet, but I have terrible news. Yesterday we got a telegram, the kind everyone dreads. Mom refused to open it until Dad rushed home from work. It was about Donnie. He's missing in action in the Philippines. 
We tried to get more information from the War Department, but all we know is Donnie and some of the other men in his unit are unaccounted for. Mom's taking this very hard. She's holding on to the hope that Donnie's just been separated from the other Marines, that he made it out of the battle but hasn't been able to report back yet. Maybe it's just some awful mistake. Dad says that can happen sometimes, right? For now, all we can do is pray for another telegram of better news. Somehow, I know it will come. I decided I had to do something to take my mind off things, to help the war effort. With all the men gone overseas, a lot of the girls are working in the factories now. I applied for a job down at the Atlas Steel Plant, and I start on Monday. Where are you, Joe? Your last letter had so many holes cut out by the sensors that it looked like a sieve. But please, write again. It means so much to us to hear from you, especially now. Love, Mary.